Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Demon Souls. And welcome to the PlayStation 5. My name is Trofinet, the babbling Belgian, and I welcome you to my very first PlayStation 5 Let's Play series. It's been a while since I uh, was able to actually get my hands on one of these things, but finally, I got a phone call last week where we uh, actually managed to get one. Uh, it only took me four months, which... Uh, I mean, I'm glad I have one now, but it, damn, it was really hard to get to get my hands on the PlayStation 5. But this is the first series we're going into. Of course, if you're familiar with the channel, we've played through uh, almost every Souls game on the channel so far, even a few uh, multiple times. Um, but if you, you're new to the channel, let me know uh, in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear how you found this channel, because uh, that just helps me out in uh, just dealing with... <laughs> You know, the statistical side of YouTubing. But yeah, this is Demon Souls, the original Souls game. And it's been completely remade. I played a little bit of this version uh, to test a few things out because I had a really bad day getting this thing set up for my uh, recording setup. But I'm finally managed to do it with about two different Macs. But there we go. Let's go into it already. So that's why you see uh, the continue button there available as well. I just played the, the first few, uh, hour to see if everything worked smoothly, but it seems like it is actually working smoothly. If you've seen my other series, you know that I try to be as detailed as possible. We're going to delve right into the story. I've played the original Demon Souls way back when, um, but I barely remember anything about it. I remember the first few levels. I know I've completed it, um, but it was, it took me a long time to actually complete it. I'm not an expert at these games, but I try to do my very best and we will get through this together. Cause, uh, yeah, we're going into new game. I've set up one visual character already. We're going with a female character. Because uh, I actually made a preset here, so that just saves me the time of actually going to um, all the creation stuff. And then, I've been thinking about this. Class-wise, I think I want to go with something I rarely actually do in Souls games. Because usually I go for like a dexterity, katana style character uh, using a bit of magic. And that is definitely an option in Demon Souls, but I feel like in Demon Souls it makes things a bit too easy. I tried with a spell uh, character, a magic character uh, in that first hour and I felt like just being able to toss fireballs whenever I wanted made things a little bit too easy. It's still a very difficult game but that just uh, gave me a backup that I didn't really want to have. But first things first, of course the name needs to be Trovinet. And then the class. So we have the, well, the classic selection in between what you get in usual Souls games. So Soldier, Knight, Hunter, Priest, Magician, Wanderer. So Magician was the one that I tried out. Wanderer, Barbarian, Thief, Temple Knight, and Royalty. So there's a few things here that uh, I'm really unfamiliar with since this was so long ago. But the thing that I wanted to try out was actually the Temple Knight. Not because she's really really well equipped with uh, heavy powerful armor and a big weapon because that's also one part of it i want to try out the helper that she's equipped with from the start but also fate i rarely do a fate character i rarely use a fate character and this seems like a very cool alternative starting character that i never really tried out before uh so the temple knight a special knight that protects the temple of god heavily clad and equipped for crowd control who draws upon a restorative miracle so we get a bit of a backup in the form of a healing miracle seems like we have a shield we have a talisman a full set of heavy armor, but we might want to get rid of a few of that just to be able to roll around. But Temple Knight. And then, of course, the starting gift is also very important. And I'm going to go, since we don't have offensive magic, I'm going to go with the Providential Ring, which raises item discovery, giving us more usable items, which we will definitely need in the first few hours. So that is that. And with all of that, I think we're ready to go. So, uh, yeah, Trovinet. Here we go. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was 
was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber. And that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fisher to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. The awe of the Twin Fangs. Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbain. Skurva the Wanderer. The sixth Saint Astria with her knight Gahal Vinland. And Sage Frake the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? And there we go. Um, would you like to play the journey to the Nexus? So that's basically the introductory uh, sequence, which we will do, because it's actually really beautiful. Um, and there we are. And a bit of uh, ankle deep water. Brave soul who fears not death. And we approach the fog to the fissure. that is blocking off Volataria from the rest of the world. Because I feel like Demon Souls so actually does a better job than the other games at setting up the world. So, King Alant of Volataria was messing around with a big old demon, broke it free, and that's the, uh, that's the old one that the... Uh, the cutscene was talking about, and that creature unleashed a powerful colorless deep fog that shrouded the land and turned, uh, well, a bunch of demons loose. And all those demons started not actually killing people, but uh, claiming their souls. And because they lost their souls, they actually lost their minds as well and turned into mad men and women. And look at this game. Holy crap. So this is one of those... Uh, Normal humans that actually uh, lost their minds. I think I don't know if this one actually attacks. This is the first one you encounter. I think just for the tutorial's sake, this one doesn't attack. Oh, I never really noticed that. But um, nor normal normal souls thingy, so we can do an attack. We can also do a quick attack. So that was the heavy attack and a quick attack. Okay. We got a little light on our um, on our waist there, which will help us illuminate dark areas a little bit. But this game has been beautifully remade by Blue Point Games because I I played the first hour and even though I kind of recognized level layout, I never really um, I, I felt like a lot of the areas felt new. But I'm pretty sure this was already in the uh, original game, so you can see a tower that we're trying to reach. But this area in, in its own, so this was there was an original tutorial se section in uh, Demon Souls, but I don't remember this at all. And there we have our first enemy that actually attacks, but with this thing, oh, it is actually pretty slow. So, 
I'm gonna try and attack. But yeah, this weapon is a lot slower than the short sword that I uh, used on the mage. So I did take a bit of damage. Um, and I guess this is a good, well, a good opportunity to talk about healing in Demon's Soul. So healing is not done with an Estus flask of some sort. Um, it is done through those uh, herbs that you see in the bottom. Oh wow, this, this attack is really slow. And there we go. I do a lot of damage though, so that kind of balances that way. I'm actually wondering how quick... Ooh, yeah, I'm definitely over encumbered here. Um, but healing is done through those grasses that I can uh, use, but they're consumable, so they do run out. If I don't have any, any, any more tough luck, I, yeah, just... I'm stuck without healing, which makes this game even more difficult. But then, the other thing I talked about is why I roll like a uh, truck, is because my equip burden is over a certain percentage. So, so as you can see, at the top right there, it's 99.5%, which is huge. Um, I can still roll if I go over that, so that's the maximum I could have done, actually. If I go over that, I actually can't really roll anymore, I'm assuming. Can I show this off? Probably not, because I don't have anything else. I mean, if I remove the helmet, I'm up to 86. If I remove the armor, I'm not even below 50. So that still is a relatively slow roll. Um, can I find a good middle ground here? So I could get ri rid of everything but the boots and then I'm at 35. So as you can see, I roll a lot quicker that way. Um, but the one other thing that I could do is actually get rid of the shield for now. I'm gonna try to not use the shield too much. So that the scale armor actually goes up to... Yeah, that's 13 and a half. How much is the shield? The shield is only three. That's not going to make too much of a difference. I need to go to 21 at least, so I need to lose seven points. Um, I'm guessing the, yeah, the greaves are actually seven points. So that gives me just body armor. Just body armor. So I am going to take more damage, but now I can actually roll a lot faster. We'll see how this works. If this doesn't work out, we'll uh, just make some more adjustments. Yeah, okay. I don't see where are we going, where are we going, there we go. And I did get hit there, so that was a tiny hit. But I think that was still double the damage from the the previous uh, hit that we took. And then we got our first item, and that is... Some more cross, which is nice. And we're back outside. Alright. A lot of arrows though, which is... I feel like the levels also got a lot more detail. I don't think the original had that much uh, leeway in providing us with that much of uh, environmental storytelling. So there's a lot of arrows here, so indicating that there was a siege at some point. And this tower does seem like it has seen better days. So let's go over here. And then we get to another thing that I don't know if this was in the original Demon Souls, but you can leap over ledges like these. I do take a little bit of damage, a little bit of fall damage, but now we're over here. Well, there was even a ladder here, but yeah, it didn't really reach all the way up top. I think this, yeah, so this is an area with a few more extra enemies. Uh, I'm gonna try and actually do a parry. That was... There we go. Did take a little bit of damage in return, but there we go. I do love the animations. The animations are great for this game. Um, there we go over here. And then we can backstab this guy. Ooh. Yeah, and I think they made custom animations for both parry, so reposts, and backstabs for every single weapon type. Um, they didn't really change the timing of the attacks, just the... Um, yeah, the, the animation itself. So the timing should still be the same as in the original game. But yeah, it just hits so well. A, a lot is also um, attributed to the sound design. Because that's really good. Just the uh, big thumbs that you're getting from the, uh, the hits of your weapons. Because even with the swords, you have that same powerful crunch when you whenever you hit an enemy. So these guys are pretty simple. You just roll past them and then backstab them. There we go. Oh, that extra stab in the back afterwards, that's just so bad. We are up to seven grasses. I'm not going to spend any just yet. And then we can move to the next area. And that brings us to the Forlorn Outpost, which is a bit more of a crowded area. A bit more in close quarters, so we're going to have to be careful. And we face our first, like, 
real soldier enemy. So this guy is going to be a bit more maneuverable, but still a backstab with a halberd is going to be enough to one-shot this guy. We're not getting any items from dropped enemies just yet. I don't know if that's because of the fact that this is a tutorial section or not. But uh, let's move on. There's another gate here, and I think, yeah, there's an enemy over there. Can we actually open this? No. No, 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 no. So let's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I can kill them in three normal hits as well, but it takes a lot of time to actually hit. I felt like he could have swiped me in between those swings, so I don't know if the Halberd is that good of a weapon to actually start this off. I can actually two, wait. I got my health back. That's, was that because of the teleportation then? Ooh. Yeah, and now we got our first blue eye knight. So this, the, even though this is a tutorial, this is actually ramping up the tech. The tension. And there we go. Ooh. So that was a different animation because I was two-handing the halberd. I did get hit once, but as you can see, that was still quite a sizable chunk from my health bar, especially since we don't have a really easy way of healing that off with uh, an Estus Flask. And there we have it, another one. So immediately facing two of these guys. And I think if I can roll... Did he just get hit by the fire? Felt like he kind of recoiled from... Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Can I actually break his guard? I wasn't really breaking his guard. He did get stunned a bit from that heavy swing. Because this guy actually holds his shield up really well. And so I can't really break his guard. And that's actually... I can't really... Come on, boy. This hallway is really narrow. There we go. And there we go. Kind of a thump in the face. And there he goes. I mean, look at the, how pretty this game is now. It just drops my jaw to the floor how well they've uh, they've translated this into this yeah, almost hyper-realistic style. And there we go, we get some half moon grass, which is actually more potent than the, uh, the crescent moon grass that we've been using so far. And we get our first bowman. So just a bit of an introduction to every uh, enemy that we'll be facing. And then you saw, I think it actually does more damage when I'm facing their back anyway, uh, which is also something that works on you. If you get hit in the back, even though it's not a repost or a backstab, you actually get damaged more. So I know shields are really good in uh, Demon Souls, but since they're a bit... Ooh, that was... That was straight up his ass. Um, I, I, I apologize for that. Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't really look good, does it? <laughs> Poor man. Uh, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, right, shields. So shields are really good, but I feel like I want to try and do this with as little shield usage as possible since uh shields basically negate any damage that go goes into you if you just hold up your shield so i can actually demonstrate that so if i just hold up my shield they just record and i can just attack back and just make this a little bit too easy it's less related to skill uh not that i mind because i might actually go back to that strategy for a few fights, and in some fights you actually need to. Um, but if I can get around it by just dodging and better positioning, then I will try and do so. But just how the light drops, some frames... Um, if you just hold still, you wouldn't even believe that this is a, a game that's running in real time. Because it's just really, really gorgeous. Because um, the first time they showed this on... Um, on stage, I didn't really believe that this was going to be the graphical quality, but look at this thing! This is the Vanguard Demon! I don't know if you remember this guy from when we, when you first played this, but... This, this thing didn't look like that! This thing didn't look this gross! It, it definitely didn't look this gross! It looked way worse, it was just like a bunch of polygons! And this guy looks flashy, there's like change wrapped around this body. There's this, uh, there's floppy nipples! Why are there flo Oh god, that was that was in my face. Um, I kinda got hit there. I'm not gonna try and heal because if you know this game, you know this boss battle is supposed to be lost. I'm gonna try to win regardless, but... Ooh. 
His range is actually bigger than Look at this thing. I pressed the roll, but, but that didn't work. Yeah, there we go. Our first death. <laughs> but as I said, this, this is a boss that you're supposed to lose against. You can win. Uh, but even if you win, you die like five minutes afterwards. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. But as you can see, we are not dead. And we're still wearing no pants, so I apologize for that, but that's just because I can roll better that way. And we have this nice it's white shade Phoenix. around this now. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. So there we go, the Nexus. You have died and the Nexus has imprisoned your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. So for some reason, instead of the demon actually absorbing our soul, we were imprisoned in the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your corporeal body. So our body is gone. This is us in soul form. Which means that we lost half our health, as you can see. Our maximum health bar has been reduced to 50% of what it was originally, which is something that made Demon Souls infamous as a very, very hard game. Because from now on, we need to do most of the game without our full health bar. While the tutorial section gave us that full health bar, even, even with that, we kind of felt some hardships. But look at this place! And full HD, well, 4K technically, but I mean the recording, um, I'm not going to record in 4K because those files are going to be huge. So let's just enjoy this at 60 frames per second in uh, full HD because that's that's impressive in its own right. Um, we still have all our equipment. Uh, for once, we also have our souls that we acquired. So the when we kill enemies, we get souls. And we can spend that on certain things like repairing our equipment, buying new equipment or leveling up. Um... Other than that, uh, if we die from now on forwards, we're going to lose those souls and they're going to be dropped on the place where we die. And if we don't manage to get them back before we die again, um, we lose them permanently. So it's just a matter of spending your souls um, just diligently so you don't actually um, lose those. Uh, the plan for this series, by the way, is to actually do every uh, stage. So as the, um, the Maiden in Black just said, there are six Archstones. Uh, only five of which are actually working, because as you can see, the second one uh, at the top there is broken. So there are five worlds, and each of them has five stages. Um, which is going to be, each of them is going to be an episode. So I'm going to try and cut this down into manageable, but still quite long episodes, where we always end up with a boss fight. So, first up is going to be, of course, the first world is going to be Boletaria itself, Boletaria Castle. And now we're going to start moving through these in a certain pattern that you'll see emerge soon enough. But uh, right here there are also several characters that we first need to talk to. Some of them just introduce themselves, the other ones might have something useful for us. So let's start with this shiny blue man with a... Yeah, this is a... I mean, they, they redesigned the characters as well and just the facial expressions alone are amazing. So, uh, hello! Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the archstones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed Politaria? And there we go, so our first introduction to the crestfallen warrior of this game, because that's this is kind of a character that returns often in Souls games, so there's always this one knight that is shiny blue and just doesn't care about anything anymore. You came for demon souls? 
or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. But it's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> oh, gotta love his new face. Um, so this is the Crestfallen Warrior. Then we have Stockpile Thomas over here. I'm Stockpile Thomas. When the Scuds came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here in this nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. So what Stockpile Thomas basically does, and this is kind of unique to Demon Souls, is he stores your excess items. I don't know if in the remake they actually store them automatically if you pick them up, but there's a limit to the items that you can actually carry in this game, which isn't um, a factor in most of the other games. But so aside from our equipment burden, what we actually wear on our body, there's also an item burden, which is a separate counter. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, he can actually store your access baggage, as he just said. And he's trustworthy, you can keep your stuff with him. When the scourge came, I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a coward. When I came to, I was in this nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but <laughs> I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. So yeah, I feel like they've done a really good job in redesigning these characters. And I don't know if they actually re-recorded the voice lines as well, because I really feel for Stockpile Thomas in this game, while I can't really remember feeling that way in the uh, original game. While well, it's been a very, very long time though. So uh, let's leave it at that for now. Best of luck to you. And then there's one more character we need to talk to. And that is Baldwin over here. You knew here. Are you here for my services? The name's Baldwin. I'm just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? No, indeed. And as you can see, you might notice that Baldwin actually doesn't really look entirely human because he has like these scales on his arm. Um, it might actually be just burns. I don't know what it, it's meant to convey, but I feel like he's not entirely human. Just uh, a reinforced arm there. If you haven't heard, there's another blacksmith at the entrance to Stone Fang Mine. He's an eccentric old man. He knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul-starved men. If you do meet him... No, forget it. That stubborn old Nerebo will just chase you off. So there we go. We already know that there's a second blacksmith at the entrance of Stonefang Tunnel, which is not something that we'll do today, but uh, good to know later on. So we can repair, upgrade, or sell you stuff. So if you repair equipment, you can use some souls, to uh, repair your equipment. So right now the halberd is the only thing that's damaged. So I can spend those 12 souls on repairing that um, weapon. Because contrary to other souls games, your weapons have durability. Well, in other souls games they also do. But in this game you need to repair them yourself. So I think in Bloodborne you needed to repair them manually as well. But in, for example, Dark Souls 3, they automatically repair themselves at a bonfire. So 
It's a bit of a, a bit of a different style of doing things. And then for upgrading weapons, we need certain e uh, well, we need certain items, and those are hardstone shards which we don't already have. So uh, let's keep it at that for now. Um, there's also a lot of things that he sells, but I don't think there's anything that's going to be interesting for us. And we can't actually buy them because we don't have the souls for it. Okay. You come back alive. I need your business. So yeah, Baldwin isn't really one that's in it to really help us. He kind of helps us uh, out of a bit of a self-interest. Because if he helps us, we can get gather more souls and we can spend them at his shop to get more weapons. Which will allow us to, again, kill stronger demons. So, um, there's a lot more to the Nexus, but we'll start try to uh, explore this a bit more uh, over time. A bit more gradually. So, uh, we'll get back to this uh, more often than not. So, let's go to the Archstone of the Covetous King. So, the Covetous King is, of course, King Alant that we heard about before. And we can go to the gates of Boletaria. A huge stone castle in the heart of the northern kingdom of Boletaria. Hungry soldiers attack trespassers, their souls stolen by demons, while nearby terrible dragons have taken root. Sounds like a very good first um, level. And this is actually really cool. The loading times on the PlayStation 5 are insane. Because we're already at Boletaria Castle. We get a bit of an uh, introductory cutscene here. There's no, not going to be any voice lines because this is just to introduce us to this big ass red dragon. Which is a bit of a classic in Souls games. You always start the first level with a dragon. There it is. There it is. He has a few corpses in his mouth. And luckily he doesn't want to attack us just yet because uh, we're standing right there by the way. I don't know why he doesn't, because, uh, yeah, that's that's our position here. And that was a ghost. I kind of was scared that there was already a, a person there. But um, the one thing I forgot in the tutorial level is actually use my miracle, because, of course, I can switch to my talisman, which is that tiny piece of cloth I have in my hand at the moment, and then use the, uh, the healing miracle. I don't know how much that is actually going to heal, because, again, I've never played as this character. But the gates of... Boletaria Castle. This is really, really amazing. The camera, I feel like the camera is a little bit further back than it used to be. And it makes this wall look even bigger. <laughs> this place is incredible. Um, what we already see is, of course, the wall itself. We'll be spending most of our time trying to scale this thing and trying to open the front gates because right now those are closed. Uh, we also have a chapel on the left there, which is probably not something that we're going to want to do today. And then at the bottom is, yeah, a very fiery river and a bit of a hangman's gallows over there. So where they execute people outside of the city. But of course, if we move forwards, we get to deal with those uh, hungry soldiers that the game was warning us about already. So we get two in one go. Let's just go for the sweep. And oh wow, I'm actually actually taking a lot of damage. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should. I'm gonna try this the healing miracle now, and that heals up. Ooh, that actually healed up mm, almost everything. That was nice. I'm gonna try and actually equip a bit more of uh, armor. Can I actually get away with putting on the greaves? That just keeps us below 70, which is, I think, still one of the thresholds. Oh, it's still slow as hell. Hmm. Do I... I'm gonna go without the greaves. I feel like I wanna be rolling. We do get more Crescent Moongrass, and I think these drops are fixed. So the first few enemies you face actually give you extra... Uh, healing items to just give you a little bit of a fighting chance But right now I feel like our magic isn't up to snub because that blue bar underneath our uh, health bar is how Much magic we have left and by using that one spell we actually lost more than half of our magic So I don't think we can actually heal up again with the miracle which is fine. It actually healed up quite a bit um, These soldiers are all hiding behind the barricades Which is uh, fine, I guess there we go. Ooh, that was actually weird. So that attack kind of pierced the uh, other guy. It was more like a combo. Looks actually. Well, what happened there? 
Ah, so you hit the first time, but then in the backswing, I actually hit the uh, the second guy, which is interesting. And there we have two more. Okay, I don't know why the local doesn't want to work. So that's that. What I do have with this weapon is breach. Ooh. Didn't expect that to be a backstab from that distance, but holy hell, that was a backstab. And then we get more healing items. We get a one more angry soldier on the left. He's probably gonna try and jump again. We can that little tap to the back of the head is just so aggressive. And then there's this one guy with the fire sword. There we go. Yeah, fire on the ground doesn't seem to hurt you all that much. And we got our first fire bomb. That's good. I want to be saving up the fire bombs. I think they, yeah, they're available in my quick select now as well. I think most of these guys actually start up with a uh, a jumping attack, making it very easily easy if you have a lot of space to actually work around it. And then we get fine resin, which is a buff for our weapon. We can actually apply fire damage on top of that. So this is the first bit where you need to think a bit. So there's a, an archer over here. And of course there are other enemies as well. And the archer we can't really reach, which is something that you can immediately remedy with a... Uh, with a fireball. There we go. And then we need to be careful because there's a uh, bottomless pit over here. With some fancy like fireflies. I don't know what those are supposed to be. Ooh, that guy just went down in one go. There we go. Soldier's Lotus and Half Moon Grass. Yeah, I haven't actually been going through the item descriptions just yet. So let's quickly do that. So the armor that we're wearing probably gives us a bit more information about the um, the temple guards. So the Murden Scale Armor. White metal armor with an inner layer of scale issued to knights who serve as temple guards. The first temple was built in Meerd. A land that fell long ago. Its weight significantly slows stamina regeneration. So even that is um, a big impact, actually. The other armor pieces will have the same description. So let's go. Ooh, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's equip that back. And we have the Talisman of Gold, a handcrafted metal amulet. It's actually metal. Uh, featuring a symbolic depiction of gold used to cast miracles. So depiction of gold is like... Uh, yeah, a lot of feathers on a, a big man in armor. Now we have the Halberd, uh, a standard pole weapon, a highly versatile weapon that performs similarly to an axe. Can sweep multiple targets in a single swing, but are difficult to handle and require both strength and dexterity to wield properly. So that still requires certain aspects then, I suppose. Oh, there we go. There is actually scaling. So we have E-scaling with dexterity and then descaling with strength. So there is still scaling on dexterity and strength i'm just kind of relearning this because i don't know what is unique to um demon souls and what isn't and then of course the shield the shield is yeah popular amongst warriors of the fate due to its ease of use a medium-sized metal shield the one other thing is the providential ring a luxurious ring of simple design raises the chances of item discovery once the most prized possession of a merchant he bet his life on the hope of greater riches so there we go. Uh, the half moon grass doesn't really tell us anything, I think. Yeah, so the effects of moon grass vary depending on its state at the time of harvest. So the further along the moon um, analogy we are, the more healing this thing will do. And then we have the soldier's lotus, what we just picked up. Consumed to stop bleeding. In Boletaria, these petals have symbolic meaning and are given to warriors when sent off to war. And then an actual binding is something we actually started with, uh, well, we got once we died the first time, the mark of those imprisoned by the Nexus. The bearer of the seal is bound to the Nexus, never to be free, even in death. When the body is lost, the soul remains trapped. Nexial binding returns the servant to the Nexus, but alas, without any souls collected. So basically the lore explanation of why we go back to the Nexus, but lose all our souls. We basically sacrifice those uh, in return of... Uh, to be able to stay alive, kinda. So I'm gonna try to follow up on those uh, item descriptions every time we find a new item, which we'll uh, see, uh, it, well, more of in a minute, because we're going into another building. And there's an enemy just hiding around the corner there. The problem is that I, uh, well, I'm wielding an, a, a halberd, so... I don't really have a perfect weapon to use indoors. I don't know, are they actually... 
This is pretty quick, actually. Let's just stab him in the back. And then in the back again. <laughs> it is just so much. It takes forever to do a backstab. I always feel like I shouldn't be doing backstabs because it just takes too long. There we go. And then I think if I recall correctly, we have our first double soldier fight. So I'm just going to... Ooh. I got hit with fire there from a fireball. And there's another one. There we go. This guy is actually very trigger happy. There we go. Kind of got hit there, so I feel like I'm going to have to heal up now. Um, I don't know if the rolling actually... Do I take the benefit of a temple guard? I'm going to go for it. Let's go. Let's go full armor for now and see what the difference, what difference that makes. Because I've... I think that um, Demon Souls is one of the games where armor matters the most. So let's heal up and then we can go over here. I could also use my shield like a normal person, but... One thing that isn't... That is something that you guys don't see or um, feel, I should say, is that I can feel the soldiers actually winding up their um, swings with the firebomb so i can even if i don't look at them directly i can feel them rumbling the uh the firebomb and getting getting them ready to throw because uh, the the controller rumbles just ever so slightly when uh the soldier is uh, winding up to throw that firebomb which is really really cool because even if i'm not looking at him i'm going to be able to uh well just react to that a bit sooner is that an explody barrel by the way I don't know if it is. Can, can you hit that for me? That didn't look like an explody barrel. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stab him there. Yeah. See, I felt that before I saw it happening. It's, it's just really, really cool. Uh, and then this one is the yeah, so I can feel it. <laughs> I felt the rumbling of the uh, the firebomb being thrown. So now I'm going to have to run up the stairs so I can... Uh... I'm going to actually move back a little bit because I feel like yeah, the firebomb guy can actually hit me pretty well here. There we go. Got a mid-swing there. Ah, that was too soon. I mean, it is better, the armor. It doesn't make too much of a difference. I think it's like... 50% extra protection. Um, there's an item behind here, but we can't really get that just yet. So I'm going to just move a little bit further. Maybe get rid of the... Because I can just block this guy as well. Don't usually do that, but blocking... As a temple card, it might actually make sense. I gave it a bad rap before, but... All the range I have with this thing is just amazing. I should probably start... Playing as the Temple Guard. And that's another Fireball. And... Oh. I don't need to roll. I mean, I mean, I need to roll for that, but... Kinda hit the wall, which stopped my uh, combo. And then there's another item over here. I don't actually know. I can drop down here now. There we go. More Half Moon Grass. I think I should probably heal... Just to be sure, we're already at the top of the wall right now, so I'm gonna just have to be careful to not get hit by this thing. And as you might have noticed, that just destroyed the barrier that was protecting this item. And this is something that I wanted to... Because uh, this gave me the idea to actually go for the Temple Guard, because this gives us the Bastard Sword. And uh, I don't know if it's actually... Is it stronger than the Halberd? What is the deal? So it's the same exact damage. A bit more durability, but it is heavier. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so it is heavier. That is... It does... It has more defense if I want to guard with it, which makes sense. And it looks great, by the way. I love the design of it. And since I wanted to use this, uh, you aren't strong enough to use this with one hand. Aha, uh -huh, so what are the stats that I need? I need 18 strength to actually use the Bastard Sword, okay. And we're going with the Halberd for now, but uh, let's focus on uh, on strength next time we're able to level up. I actually don't know what I start at. So I have 14 strength right now, so just enough for the Halberd. I think I need to just go with 
Single swipes? Oh no. Didn't really hit the wall there, that was weird. Now, um, always need to be careful. Watch out for a six. I'm gonna just kill this guy. Because uh, we don't want to have a, an archer in the back. I think there's another one. Oof. I just stumbled to the side. I just tossed my entire body to the side. Because the, uh, the heavy armor basically makes it impossible to roll. I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to do with that. Because this guy is going to be... Or... No, he missed me. He missed me. And then he missed me again. So there we go. Thank you. I think this guy also always drops uh, half moon grass. So right now we're at the top of the wall. We can see where we started before. Which is always something that's really cool in uh, Souls games. So you can actually have a bit of an overview of where you are and where you were. Got a bit of a rumble there, but I think it was just my feet hitting some debris. And we got six fire bombs. But this, that's not the only reason why we came into this building. Because this building allows us to go back down. And these guys are just going to kill themselves. There we go. Burning to a crisp on those exploding barrels, kind of giving you the idea that, yeah, don't don't hit barrels with fire. Because hitting barrels with fire might end in your just dying prematurely. Damn it. Okay. So the lack of rolling is really annoying. I, I still have the reflexes to roll and it just... Gets me in a really bad position. Um, I think... I think I might have actually hit... There's supposed to be two chains, as you can see. I think I hit this chain through the wall. Um, because this is kind of a bit of a puzzle. You can cut the chains and that drops down two corpses that were hanging from this wall. We'll go down in a minute to actually grab what is on those corpses. But for now, we're still making our way down. And now we have this group of characters. Uh, I think there's about three or four of them. Yeah, there's four of them. So I just wanna... I think I might actually be able to toss a fireball. Oh. Or you can do that, that's also... And he killed three of them. So there's five of them, great. Um, hello fellas. And I did kind of roll out of the way there. And yeah, through the ass. I love it when you do backstabs on stairs. Just the fact that the positioning is off and then you just, yeah, get them in the wrong spot. There we go. Pull the lever. And this is our first shortcut. So this opens up a sideway um, just from the base of the wall. So if you go down here, this is where we started. So if we can go to the left, we still need to kill a whole lot of people with fire swords. But it's a bit quicker than the... Uh, the other way and a bit less enemies. I almost forgot to check out the corpses um, that we just freed. Because if you take a closer look, I know they're mangled a little bit, but um, this is clearly a woman and this is, yeah, a, a little girl. And if we just examine the remains, we actually pick up the jade hair ornament. And over here we get the old ragged set, which might actually be able to, hmm, can I? kind of get rid of some of my equipment and swap it out for these pieces because the weight will go down but i don't think i'll get below yeah i won't be able to go below 50. oh i can actually if i go for the complete ragged rope set i did go down in armor like a lot now so it is giving me protection but it's not much i think i lost about six 12 and another 10, so 22 points of armor. Hmm, I don't know enough about the calculation as to how much damage resistance that gives me. But it is giving us the flexibility now. So we still have armor and we are below 50 now so we can roll normally. I'll try this a little bit. If I just get whacked immediately once we go further in the level, um, I might sw swap this out again for the big bulky armor. But uh, I want to still have that, that movement flexibility. Now the other side of the wall, I'm going to hold off on that. It leads to that cathedral over there, but we can't open it just yet. And you might see someone standing there. That's uh, the first red-eye knight. This guy basically one-shots you, probably with the armor you won't. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit. Although, 
There is a way down over there as well, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just gonna take a quick peek. There's uh, two more soldiers here, but I should be able to handle them. And with the shield, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Ah, there we go. An archer and a spearman. Uh, we got ooh, a lot more healing items, which, I mean, it was worth it just for that. But was there a way down in this area? No, there wasn't. Okay, so you can see him standing there. He's, he's, he's a son of a bitch. I'm, kinda, I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, so let's continue through the full gate that the Blue Eye Knight was guarding. So there we go. This is now cleared up because the Blue Eye Knight is dead. And now we can slowly make our way down here. And there's going to be just more soldiers in our way. I think this is also one of the first parts. Yeah, he's going to toss a firebomb and that's going to explode. So trying to use the barrels against us. You can actually throw those pretty far. And now that we have our rollback, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, the game also tries to um, block you from using your weapons against objects too much because that actually degrades the weapon faster if you hit walls and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get back there, buddy. I don't need to hit you multiple times. Is something else firing at me? Why is it lighting up like that? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, <laughs> it's a guy in the back. I don't mind. I don't mind. I f every time I see that soldier winding up between my two uh, swings, I feel like he's gonna hit me. So, there's a few barricades here because this guy is trying to uh, shield his shop. Because this is the, the first NPC that we kind of face in the, uh, the open here. Good day to you. Care to look over my wares? Mostly stolen, but who's telling me? So this is the draggling thief. Um, so kind of, he looks like the other soldiers, but he clearly hasn't lost his mind as much as the other ones. Brave knight or lowly fodder, the demons snatched their souls regardless of their station, plummeting them all into madness. And those who dare cling to their humanity were hunted down. It is the end of Great Boletaria as we know it. But hell, at least the demons don't send us to our deaths in battle. <laughs> so that's actually really interesting. So what this draggling basically is saying is that, okay, the demons steal the souls of the people, but it feels like, yeah, the soldiers were usually sent out to battle to their deaths by the king, and the demons leave people alone after they've stolen their souls. It's still very evil, but there's like a... A bit of nuance to it. So he sells the uh, plate armor, which is the armor that one of the starter classes starts with. And he also sells a variety of basic weapons. So longsword, club, short spear, crossbow, and a bunch of shields. He also sells healing items, but I don't know if I really want to spend some of those, uh, well, my souls on those. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna risk it. Go ahead. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. Basically the first time where you have to make a choice, do you spend your souls here to buy items or do you save up so you can uh, spend them on uh, leveling up later on? Because there's still quite a chunk of level ahead of us right now. So, out up in the open, we're beyond the wall now and we get ambushed by some dudes here. I'm uh, gonna try and use my uh, reach to my advantage. Ooh. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be in trouble here. I don't need to do this twice, I think. Okay, they have me stunned not kind of. I'm gonna have to be in trouble here. So as you can see, there's also archers in the back. Okay, the rolling is doing some weird sh shit. I think I got both of them now. Ooh, I got, I got hit in the back. Got hit in the back. Go back inside. Heal. There's an arrow in my shoulder. It just missed my shield. I don't actually know if the shield actually works that way. I know there's a little bit of homing on the arrow, so you do need to be careful. I think I heard another one. Yeah. So we got a crescent moon cross back, which is fine, I think. Um, and we killed most of the enemies down here. We just need to bob and weave a little bit. I think, is there actually a way down there? Ooh, never checked that out. 
There we go. That drag kind of missed me there. Whew. That was a ghost. That was a ghost. And he missed me as well. That was, that was a bad miss, buddy. You can't miss at that point. It's just uh, life-threatening there. So we can hear the second bowman, but... There's a bit of an annoying problem in the way first. So we're facing an, a blue-eyed knight together with a bowman on the back. And then, yeah, there we go. We got the backstab. And then you can't really backstab them immediately, but you can start hacking away. So I think I heard another arrow being fired. I'm going to check out his corpse in a minute. I just want to get rid of this guy first. Although I know that this guy is just going to drop off. Oh, no. Right. I kill him in one go. And we get some more healing items. Okay. Whew. That was the first sketchy bit. So I want to go back down, though, because there was this other path over here. I have no idea what this is. Because again, oh, that's that. Wait, that's just drags. Dangerous to say that, but that's that's just drags. So that's two coming up. So is he gonna jump or not? I'm just gonna block this this time. I think I should be just in time to block the other one. There we go. I think I hit a little bit, but with the extra armor, that's not that much of a problem. I still have healing as well. Uh, there we go. So that guy is going into a murder frenzy. I do love that attack though, it kind of teaches you to not just keep standing in front of your enemies. Wait, this, wait, is this just leading to nothing? There's more over there. Oh! Yeah, okay. Can I go back? No, I can't go back. Shit. Okay. So, I don't see any other way than just drop down on this roof. Oop. So those are definitely explodey barrels. So I'm just gonna run up here because I want to see what I'm dealing with. Oh, oh shit! That's no good. Okay, so that does hit multiple enemies. That's good to know. There we go. Use that halberd to our advantage. Funnel the enemies. I think I hear something in my back. I heard some slappy feet. And I'm pretty sure... Oh, there's two more in there. Didn't join the party just yet. I don't think I really need to... Do all the... Oh! Oh, I love the fact that weapons just bounce off. That was just realistic. I could swing my halberd that way. There we go. Ooh, where we got our first upgrade materials. Ah, so that is a fast track to upgrade materials. That is interesting. So now we technically could go... Seriously? Seriously. Is that how your mother taught you to invite guests? I don't know what that was. I heard somebody swinging. Hi. Those archers are really rude. Just trying to kill everybody. So that was basically a, a mini trap. They got a lot of souls. I don't know where this actually comes back to. Because it needs to tie into the rest of the level. Seriously? The rest of the level, I suppose. Oh, the sound design on these guys. This guy doesn't have a shield. Oh, wow. That was... Okay, so he fell down. Ooh, wow, he actually took a bit. Quite a lot of my help. I'm rolling. There we go. Wow. That's the first greatsword guy that we actually face. He hit like a truck. Okay, so that's the half moon grass. Well, tree this time. So he was technically a stronger... This level is bigger than I thought. <laughs> Again, the bad memory. Where is this even going? There's multiple directions and I don't know where to go first. Okay, but I mean, we're still alive. That's something. That's something, I suppose. Oh, ambush. There 
There we go. Kind of ran out of stamina at the end there. There we go. Just using that reach to our advantage is a okay. He kicked open the door. Hello? Oh. Oh! Oh, I remember this. I remember I remember that character at least. Okay, that this might this might have been this might have been bad. Um I don't, don't know if I should have Ah, uh, not on fire. There we go. Oh, no, no, don't roll forwards. She sometimes rolls in very weird directions. Calling the herd. There we go. Hello. So, are you... What's his name again? Is it Oscar? My thanks for your brave rescue. I am Ostrava. Ostrava. Volataria. Accept this as a token of my gratitude. He looks badass. So he gives you the telescope. Can I talk now to you I again? Leave. There is something I must do. So he's actually wearing the fluted set, I think it's called. And those, yeah, I'm really, I want to have that sword and, and shield, by the way. I don't know if you can actually reach the area that he was in. Because that also seems like something interesting. Might actually be able to jump over the... A railing there and then there was one item that I missed over here to the side and that's a scimitar so the scimitar requires dexterity that I don't have I think although I have dexterity 12 so it's just saying 80 because I don't have well it's lower than what I'm currently using but it is still a pretty good weapon 80 is pretty good I'm gonna stick to the halberd for now since we're kind of doing the temple guard thing um, but I think this is the way we came hi Ostrava I love that he's still physically running around in the world. So this is the way that I haven't checked yet. There's a guy with an axe in the back. But I feel like there's more to it. Ooh. Are you going to help me? I mean, I don't want to hit you. I feel like this guy can actually hold this. <laughs> I love I love the armor set. I want to have that. Just kill that axe guy for me if, if you want. That would be really nice, Ostrava. Are you... You seriously not kill? You, you might want to hit him. You might, you might want Ostrava. Can, can you hit him in the back? I don't want to. He's actually not doing that much. But he killed him, and I get the souls, which doesn't seem fair. But that is, we're doing kind of co-op right now. But with Ostrava, where is he actually going? Because he said he needed to do something, and I think I never actually looked into the side quests of Demon Souls. Is this just... Oh, this just loops around, I guess. Is this is back to... This is back to the area with all the drags, right? Or no? Um, oh, no, we're over here. So right before we... We could have gone through there. God damn it. Okay. So you don't need, need to jump down. So we can move further now. And then we go through another fog gate. And we can see the castle in the background there, so that is really nice. Uh, might there be there enemies over here? I don't know if there's enemies. I do remember this. This is that very narrow passageway, right? Yeah, so there's like a lot of enemies lined up over there, but as you can see, there's like a whole bunch of those um, rocks over here as well. So if I can hit yeah, the front. It lets them loose, and it kills all the enemies for me, yay! Lots of souls for me, and a bit of healing items, that's always very nice. So, after the massacre of um, bloody pebbles, although they don't actually look as bloody as they should, I suppose, we're at the final stretch of this level, which is really, really good. Um, but before we go over there, I'm gonna have to face these guys. Oh, he used a shield there. That was that was smart of him. I should probably do that as well. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Shields. Remember to use the shield. You're a temple guard for fuck's sake. 
So this is the big bridge that we need to go to. Um, it's actually filled with soldiers at the moment. So we're going to remedy that in a minute. Because if we go over here to the sides, there's another big hall. We actually don't know if there are items hidden behind these pillars. Doesn't really look like it. But as you can hear, there's a familiar sound um, over here. Because there's actually two dragons over here. A blue one and a red one. Now... There are a lot of items over there, you could technically go and grab them, but of course the dragon's gonna breathe fire on the entire area and you don't really want to deal with that. But it's important to know that the dragon is actually here, because if you go back to the bridge, so big foggy bridge, this is just, just lovely. I can actually go over here, you can hear the dragon in the background, and there's, there's the dragon, I should probably just get out of the way here, because the dragon isn't really... Oh happy and he's just gonna oh god he's just gonna just kill everybody on the bridge but aside from from these guys out of stamina there we go okay after killing some more fools <laughs> i'm not doing well on healing items um i think did he pass over yet no he doesn't seem to have passed over why didn't he pass over dragon are you supposed to yeah there he is are you supposed to, like, breathe fire on these guys? Yeah, th there we go. Wait. Dude! You're, suppi you're supposed to breathe fire on these fools. Oh god, I think he's doing it now. Oh, for fuck's sake, he's not doing it again. What the hell? What triggers that then? I mean, the dragon is not in favor of the soldiers. I know that much. When is he? Are you gonna... So he always goes back to that blue dragon. Because I think he, wanna, he wants to kind of protect the dragon. So there he is. What? Ow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. Are you gonna... There we go. Oh, I got hit with an arrow. Got it. Now, okay. Hi. And he's like really mad. <laughs> that extra yell at the end. There, and I think he does that a few times. Yeah. So now it's good to know that that other dragon is over there. Because if you go back, he's actually going to move. I think, is this enough? Or is he going to just keep doing circles now? Yeah, no, no, he's leaving, okay. So now that he's leaving, he's gonna tr go back to the blue dragon, because he doesn't want to leave that blue dragon alone. They are still dudes alive. But I'm gonna just run past these guys really quickly, because of course I want to avoid getting hit by the dragon. And now the dragon is gonna go back. Apparently I have a lot more time than I thought I had. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother with those two archers. I don't really care about them, so let's just move on. Yeah, because the dragon is always returning. There it is. The sound design of this thing, by the way, is amazing. It sounds really, really loud and imposing if you're over here. Okay, so. Last stretch of the level. First big thing. This big-ass lever. So if you pull this, we actually open up the front gates. And that's good, because that means that if we would be dying in the next couple of minutes, we would go back right in front of the gates, and that's where we want to go. But of course, we want to do this the normal way. You can see a bunch of shields over there. And a big-ass spear. Indicating our first boss battle, because that's what we're heading in for. Because that's what you're here for, right? In Demon Souls, the, uh, the boss battles? Hi. There we go. Just using our range a little bit. And then there's another one over here. There we go. I think there's one more soldier around the corner. Because again, I, I played this first level just to uh, try things out. Oh, this is going to be a problem. So I know... Yeah, okay, that's good. So that's stabbing. Woo, there's another one. Okay. There we go. That extra stab is actually good for in hallways. 
Because otherwise I hit the sides of the building. Because we're not done yet. We're not done yet. There's still plenty of soldiers here. There we go. Fuck your shield. And we're going to be facing another enemy type in a minute. And it's over there. You can see it on the left there. There's a, a slime with a shield on top of it. And there he goes. Okay. He goes all the way down. He must have died from that, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ah, we got hit by the slime. Because the slimes actually carry... Um, not only the shield in the front, but also have like a spear. And it is kind of blocking this hallway at the moment. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna have to heal up a little bit because the spears actually do quite a bit of damage. Uh, but now it's just a matter of getting back down again from the other side of the wall. Um, but there's one item in particular that I really want, and I think it's over here. Yeah. No, that's the unknown hero soul. Never mind, I thought it was going to be something else. I actually do shot the shields, the, the phalanx slimes, which is actually really good. I thought I was going to have to do use uh, three attacks. And if I just keep my shield up, it's actually not a problem at all. But of course, the front of these guys is heavily armored with the shield. So I can't really do anything. I need to position myself correctly and get them in the back. If I get them in the back, I can kill them in two hits. Okay, and then over here, we have some more half-moon grass, and then we can open that up. Alright, so this is the other side of the wall, and as you can see, we're right next to that giant spear we saw thrown over here. And yeah, I think rolling isn't really going to help us here, so I'm going to go back to the full armor set. So that still allows us to run around and we are protected the most because uh, what we're going to be dealing with is, well, the phalanx demon, which is protected by a whole bunch of those slimes, as you can see. I mean, it's just a matter of getting the positioning good here. Because with the halberd, we might have, I do really need to stop um, rolling because that's not going to help me out. If I just keep circling this thing, should be fine. And there you can see the actual balls. That glowing heap is the actual phalanx. The other ones are just adds. And what this thing is actually really vulnerable towards is fire. But again, we didn't go the easy route. We don't have the easy fire bombs. And I just need to stop rolling. And there we go. I think we got a few in the back nice, nicely there. Ooh, but they, they're hitting me as well. I think if I go two-hand... Because, yeah, I'm taking that. Ooh, I'm taking damage. Ooh, I'm taking damage. So let's just go behind the pillars. You can use those to heal up. Might actually just heal up twice. And once you've gotten rid of most of the slimes, you can start dealing damage to Phalanx himself. Or herself, I should say, because I think... She's the demon form of a woman. So if we can get a few of them in the back like this, yeah, we can make short work of a bunch of them. Just keep your shield up if you're not attacking. There we go, we're making some leeway. It's entirely explodes over here. So it's entirely, because it's kind of weak on its own. But of course, there's still slime, so don't, I need to be careful. To probably take care of these guys, they're just isolated at the moment. As long as I keep my shield up, nothing can really harm me here. And I do of course need to be careful that I actually do keep my shield up. But, I wanted to actually show you the weaknesses just a little bit. Because if you select the fire bombs we've been gathering, just take them out over here. Um, I can actually just put the fire bomb in there, and that actually kills a whole lot of them. There we go. But the phalanx itself is really hard to aim at, so you kind of have to manually aim. There we go. And that kind of makes short work of this boss fight. Once you get the defenses down, there's not much you can do. There we go. I might actually be able to kill all of them here. 
just to have a, like a, a bit of a clean arena. There we go. Yeah, there's like four left. They're not going to do much, so if I just keep stabbing the boss here, should be able to uh, finish this rather quickly. Another phalanx out of the way. The floor is littered with shields. But uh, yeah, phalanx isn't long for this world anymore. Another slime with him, and there we go. So more of a, 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 a boss fight that teaches you to be patient, circling around him, um, or her, I should say. And we actually kind of saw her there, see? You can see like a, an archer over there, the one we saw in the beginning cinematic as well. Because uh, of course all these demons were humans at one point, and then they started gathering more and more souls and more and more power. But that's our first boss fight. So next up, we're gonna go into... You know what, I actually need to touch this first, I think. Let's actually get the lead demon soul. We can actually check that out. And I actually forgot that I picked this up already, but the Kling Ring is very important. Mysterious ring shaped like an eye reduces the loss of HP, sustain, and soul form, which means that if you equip this bad boy, uh, so if I go to rings and equip this, I actually go up to 75% of my max health bar when I'm in soul form, but because I killed the boss now, you can't see it. I have my full health bar back and I lost kind of my white glow. But um, yeah, that's that's was going to be useful in this boss fight, but I kind of didn't use it. But the soul of the phalanx demon, if we check that out, consumed to gain... Yeah, it actually doesn't really say anything as it used to do in other games, but the soul of the phalanx demon, source of great power, consumed to gain a large number of souls, but can also be used to create magic miracles or weapons. So something to keep in mind um, that both souls, of course, can be transmuted into certain weapons, magic spells or miracles, which was going to be very useful for us but that's the first boss of demon souls done and the first stage of boletaria done as well so uh hope you guys enjoyed this first introduction this first episode into demon souls and when we get back we're gonna go into the nexus and probably move this level further or maybe go into stone fang tunnel we'll, we'll see soon enough so thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of demon souls goodbye and stay nutty